Good. Kia ora. Hello. Welcome. Welcome to the people that arrive on time. <laughs> You're my favourite kind of people. At least there's more than three of you this morning. The second service is always funny. Hey, how good is it to be together as a family? It's so good that everyone sat in the back rows and left all the front rows empty, so that's good. Doesn't change from when you're at school. Hey. <laughs> hey, I just wanted to... Um, open our service this morning with a little bit of a thought, and then I'm going to ask Mona to come forward and just to pray over us. And um, so this week, I quite like going down to the beach because it's my happy place. And in the winter, it's my happy place in the car. And in the summer, it's my happy place on the beach. So winter and summer, it's my favorite place. But I was just praying this week, and um, I just was just praying over a few things. And I just felt the verse uh, Mark eight thirty three come to mind. And it was when um, Jesus reprimanded Peter. And he was like, get him behind me, Satan. And I was like, oh, that's a hard thing to say. But he said, you are seeing things merely from a human point of view and not from God's. And I was like, oh, God, I want to be able to see from your point of view. I don't like only being able to see from my point of view. I want to be able to see from your point of view. And as we've been praying this morning and just praying over the week, um, just feeling like God is bringing all of us into position. He's getting us ready. You know, that was the first time that God, uh, Jesus spoke of his death and his disciples were like, no way, you're not going to die. Like, what are you on about? And, um, but actually, that felt uncomfortable. But they were being positioned. They were being positioned, and Jesus was being positioned to step into who he was. And I don't know about you, but it's been kind of an uncomfortable season. There's been a lot of things that have been shaken. There's been a lot of things that have been stripped. But I really believe that God is actually positioning us, positioning us to step into where he's called us and to where, um, you know, all of us are actually gifted completely different. And But we're being positioned together as a family and as the church. So I'm just going to ask Mona just to come forward and just to, to pray over us. So can we stand? And um, let's just actually get our hearts ready before God. And if you want to pray in the Spirit and in tongues, then I just invite you to do that. But let's just um, stand together in prayer. Be good just to um, just to pray in the Spirit for thirty seconds or so. It's just really to join with Holy Spirit, to join with Him, to step out of ourselves and to actually join with Him. Or just pray. If you don't prefer not to pray in tongues, it's okay. Abrayana ma makiana si anama sukwinda ma kola laya. Abrayana si anama sukwinda ma kupu ala laya kuikoya araya. Shi ala laya anama makiana si anama sukwinda ma kola laya. Hallelujah, Lord. Kuikoya araya anama makiana si anama sukwinda. Jesus, what a privilege it is to come before you as your body, as your body, Lord God. You have designed and made us uniquely. Every one of us, Lord God, has your mark, has your design, has your purpose uniquely set. No one of us is the same, Lord God. You know each one of us, Lord God. You look for each one of us. You look for us, Lord God. If you can't find us, if we've stepped off or stepped out for a minute to think about things, you're looking for us. You know each one of us. You look for us. You search for us. Today we come before you, Lord God, and we give you thanks, Lord God, for the unique positioning. We, we, we yield ourselves, Lord God, to the positioning that you have set within us. What does that mean, Lord? It means that we can follow you. We thank you, Father, for enough of you in us that we can follow your voice, we can follow your leading. We can, we can be strengthened in faith this very day to come right into the position, Lord God, in this new time. It's a new time. It is a new unction, the unction of your voice within us, Lord God, the unction of your spirit within us. 
guiding. Lord God, what a marvelous time this is to come together as the body of Christ, uniquely fitted together for this time. Father, we give you all praise and all glory. Amen. Thank you this morning, Lord God, that we can freely come, Lord God, as Mona said. Lord, we can freely come into your presence, Lord God. Lord, we just want to worship you in spirit and in truth, Lord God. We declare, Lord God, there's no one greater than you, Lord. Jesus, you're awesome. Lord, and we praise your name this morning. Sing your blood, your blood is my future. guys probably didn't even notice, but I got a bit lost on that song. <laughs> Come off them, confusion. Yeah. <laughs> so did you actually notice or not? You did? Oh, oh come on. <laughs> you mean to say no? <laughs> got a bit of that? That's all good. Just a human, eh? Yeah. And it doesn't matter. <laughs> Do you want to know what I was actually thinking about? 
I was actually thinking about one of our ewes that can't walk at the moment because its foot's all clogged up, and I need to sort that out when I get home. That's actually what I was thinking about, and it's got triplets at the moment, so it needs sorting this afternoon. <laughs> hey? Oh, it is. Here. So there you go. We're going to sing another song called Victory Is Yours, and I love this song. Uh, it's a real good song. Um, let me just, one thing I love doing with songs, like sometimes you sing them, well, we do sing them, but what I like to do is actually just um, talk the words and, uh, or just read the words and listen to them. Now listen to this, it says, Our fight is with weapons unseen. Uh, your enemies crash to their knees as we rise up in worship. And the uh, thing I love about that is, um, you know, the, the look of it or the whole loop of that line is as we rise up in worship. So any stuff that goes on, stuff that goes on, eh? But um, as we rise up in worship, our enemies crash to their knees. That's what the Bible says, and that's what we're declaring. When trials unleash like a flood, the battle belongs to the Lord as we cry out in worship. The victory is yours. You're riding on the storm. Your name is unfailing. And though kingdoms rise and fall, your throne withstands it all. Your name is unshaken. And uh, Lord, I just thank you this morning, Lord God, as we just come and worship you, Lord, as we lift up your name, Lord God. Lord, you surround us all, Lord God, that, um, Lord, in community and, and when we're in union with you, Father, we're strong. And uh, Lord, we just declare this morning the goodness uh, of your name, Lord God, the greatness of your name, Jesus. And uh, Lord, we just crown you as our King of Kings as we worship you today, Lord God. And, and uh, we just want to see you high and lifted up in this place, in our lives, Lord God. And uh, Lord, we just honor you, Father.
whose glory taught the stars to shine. Perhaps creation longs to have the words to sing, but this joy is mine. Come on, let's sing hallelujah. And hallelujahs, we magnify your name. You alone deserve the glory, the honor, and the praise. Lord Jesus, this song is for to join his disciples, he said, if any of you wants to be my follower, you must turn from your selfish ways, take up your cross and follow me. If you try to hang on to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake and for the sake of the good news, you will save it. And what do you benefit if you gain the whole world but lose your own soul? Is there anything worth more than your soul? Lord, I just pray this morning, Father God, that we wouldn't be holding so tightly onto the things of this world, Father God. Lord, that we wouldn't be so holding so tightly onto things that have been, onto hurts that have been, or onto things that were a certain way, Father God. But Lord, this morning we would release into your hands our lives and surrender. 
Lord, that we would release our lives and surrender to your will. Father God, to your way. Lord, that our prayer is that your kingdom would come and that your will would be done. Father God, move us out of the way. Lord, create in us clean hearts, Father God, so that we would be in position to take up the mission that you've set before us, Father God. So Lord, I just pray a prayer of of letting go this morning. Lord, that for some of us, it's okay to step into happiness. Lord God, for some of us, it's okay to step out of that time of grief and into a time of happiness. Father God, for some of us, it's it's time to let go of the offence and to let go of things that have been and to step into the new. For some of us, it's actually just shaking off our desires, the desire for the new, for the shiny, for the what next, and actually just going, Lord, here I am. Have all of me, Lord. So as we come into a time of your word this morning, I pray that you'll just minister to each of our hearts, Father God. Lord, where are you positioning us? What are you calling us into, Father God? May we be prepared. May we be ready, Lord, to pick up our cross and to follow you. In Jesus' name, amen. Awesome. Thank you, Jesus. Well, I'd just love to welcome any guests that we have with us this morning. It's good to have you in. Welcome. Uh, There's a connection card if you um, want to fill that in, and we'll have a leader that would get in contact with you and have any questions or anything that you would need to know. Um, And I'm just going to invite this morning, Lindley Merritt is going to come up and share around missions for our Beyond Bite. Where is Lindley? Oh, she's here. (laughs) Awesome. So welcome to Lindley. You might all, all have the Shine Trust little thing on your seat there, so we should see there. Thank you. Well, it's my um, privilege this morning to share a Connect Missions Beyond Bite with a focus on shine. So I just want to speak briefly this morning to some notes that can, I can see them up there, but they can, (laughs) Um, and then I've got a short video uh, clip that has um, come from Susan to share with you as well. So I just want to make a clarification that is a question I'm often asked with respect to shine. Uh, There are two parts to Shine. Um, Here at Connect, we, of course, support um, several missions around the world. Uh, These are in Malawi, which is Shine, in Thailand, in Vietnam, in Kenya, and Cambodia. Those are our overseas missions that we, as a church, support, plus here more locally, 24-7, God Time and also the Waimati Bible and Schools program that is fortunately still running. So within that, that's the um, role that Connect plays with respect to Shine. The other part of Shine that we have is the Shine Relief Trust New Zealand. Now, my daughter and I, uh, my daughter Holly and I formed that in 2015. Since then, we have, of course, added several trustees, Andrew Murdoch, Gail Borman, um, Linda Watt, and... um, and Sally Baxter, and we also have an honorary trustee in the North Island, Bev Turner. If the name sounds familiar, yes, she is is Anse's auntie, um, and um, and is is amazing woman with um, a huge um, who spent a, lot, a considerable length of time in Africa. So we have two parts. So as a Connect Missions, uh, the res- responsibility on for that is for the ministry part of Shine in Malawi. The trust is responsible for education. So we support the early years teachers and the the program they run there, and we also sponsor students. So I just want to clarify that because I feel people sometimes are unsure. So the Connect money, so the donations that you make to um, the missions fund here, is utilised in Malawi. First of all, we give a very small amount, it's just a token, it's about $70 New Zealand, to uh, three members of the ministry team there. Um, We have Pastor Wilfred, who has his own AOG church in a neighbouring community, Um, Luca and Brown, who um, also live in community is around. Susan heads that ministry team um, and we also provide them out of the Connect Missions funding um, a discretionary fund. Uh, This is because although they were running a church uh, 
program at the Shine Community Centre on a Saturday morning. Since COVID, they've been really struggling to get that back up and going again. People are still reluctant to come and meet in large groups. So they've been going instead out into the community. So we've provided them with this fund. Often, if you know, those of you who know Susan know that if she sees a family in need, there's no way that she can um, go beyond that family without reaching out to them. So as well as ministering and spreading um, the gospel, they are also meeting people's physical needs and providing a huge amount of medical support. So they're making regular trips to hospitals and to the health clinic um, to where they take people and um, follow up with those visit visits. Um, just a, recently, we had a $2,000 donation, which is really um, excited, just arrived in our tag to shine through Connect, and I just want to share with you that in consultation, sorry, I'm still not loud enough, are they? No, it's just <laughs> I'm not sure. Oh, okay. Um, that the Connect uh, Beyond team, that doesn't sound, is it working? It's an ice cream. I'll think of it as an ice cream. Um, <laughs> Um, that we have decided um, to tag that um, very special donation to a health clinic. Now, I've been um, in consultation with um, Debs from the Shine Relief Trust in the UK and Susan, and this is something that we feel is absolutely essential and I have to admit very, very dear to Gail Borman's heart um, as when she came with me in 2000 and. 19, we spent a lot of time at the clinic and we would very much like to see one at, in the Shine area. So at this stage we see that we will be building the, the bricks, the community will put up the walls and Shine will put on the roof and the government supposedly is supposed to pay for the medical, for the clinician and the drugs but we need a very secure building. So that's where we're heading with that. Um, I have, with respect to other impacts um, from all the results of how the money is used, I have this document which came, um, I don't want to read it all to you, but you are very welcome to, I can either email you a copy or if you don't, um, not into the emails of a copy, um, then I have a few, one, a few printed out that I can give you. But I just wanted to share one piece of this. It's a delightful document to, to read because, of course, it's written in... Uh, ..the interpretation of the situation. Um, and their English is pretty good, but um, it's always delightful to see the few little things that sneak in. Um, also... It's difficult for us because it's very, what you call, qualitative. So it's their subjective analysis of the way the Shine New Zealand money is used. We really would like some more quantitative. We really would like some more facts and figures. But we're working on it, um, but it's slow to get that out. So I just want to share this little bit, community outreach. Shine Ministry, with the, sh with the support of Shine New Zealand, facilitated different community outreaches to the most vulnerable families in as well as beyond the catchment area. These vulnerable beneficiaries were children under five at Damasi rural, rural Hospital, where many patients from surrounding rural areas seek medical help. Shine Ministry also engaged itself into communities by supporting families that were victims of floods. Physical and spiritual support was provided for the beneficiaries. For instance, the ministry provided them with maize, clothes, soap, buckets, cups, hand sanitizers, shared them the, wor shared them the word of God, and prayed for them to find hope and grace in God in the trial times. So that is actually the, the focus of the Shine Ministry team um, in Malawi. So that document is there if anyone would like a copy. Just to finish off my bit, a couple of exciting developments. I'm not sure a lot of you will not be aware that um, as though, um, and this is away from the Connect missions, but onto the Shine Trust, 
that we have a sister trust in the UK, so uh, we work alongside them and then, of course, with the um, trust in Malawi. But at the beginning of 2020, uh, the UK Shine Trust received a grant of US $295,000. And this was just so exciting. It came as a result of Phil and Debs at Hull, at their church in Hull, befriending a young Ethiopian man who was then subsequently killed in one of the Boeing. Um, there were two in quite short succession. He was returning home to Ethiopia and um, went one of those crashes. And as a result of that, Boeing decided to donate several million dollars to charities around the world. And the families of the ones who'd lost their lives could nominate a trust. And his family nominated Shine. And we were one of 99 out of hundreds of applications to receive that money. So um, the UK managed to, uh, Phil and Debs managed to get there in January of this year for a couple of weeks. That money is being used to fund income generating projects. So currently we've got fish and chicken farming. Um, uh, the fish farming, that is Susan's husband, Hastings. Uh, that is his area of expertise. That's what he does in Malawi, develop fish farming. And it's so exciting to see ponds at the Shine community. Normally you just see dry grass or dirt. Um, and so that's up and running. They've got may, a maize and a feed mill and a second children's home now, although at this stage there's still uh, no children in it, but it's there ready. Um, so that's been exciting. Just a comment about fundraising. Um, as in all charitable organisations in Timaru currently, we are struggling. We've just heard that our major fundraiser, which we've had through courtesy of BEV um, in the North Island catering for school camps from a Hamilton secondary school has again been put on hold for 2023. They've decided they're not running any camps again till the following year, so that's a bit of a disappointment. Um, we've lost that now for the last two years. Um, we still have our Mitre 10 barbecues going on, and I just want to promote a sale and anchor quiz night. I know going to a pub for a quiz isn't ever... <laughs> but it does bring us often, you know, 700 or so dollars, which is very useful. If you don't wish to go, we really honestly could appreciate anything you have that you could. We have to have prizes for raffles, so if you wish to donate a raffle prize, that will be great. And the other thing is that Bev has just challenged me last week to a month of denial, and she's going October, no meat, no chocolate. And I said, oh dear, Bev, and this has been nagging at me all week. Um, because if anyone knows me, they know what a terrible relationship I have with chocolate and a terrible relationship. So anyway, I've decided that with God's help, I might get through October without it. So if anyone um, cares to um, sponsor me for that, I'm not sure how I totally remain accountable to you, but um, <laughs> I'm accountable to him above. So that's, um, that's just one of the challenges that we have at the moment. Uh, so just two thoughts to finish before you have a quick look at this uh, little video. Shine actually is not a relief agency. Our ongoing goal is project development and providing things like the income generating projects, the health clinic, and we're hoping before too long, our own school. Um, so, and we're hoping that the projects will p eventually pay the wages and salaries and the early years and house expenses. Um, and the goal is a school with fee-paying students. So there are times, however, when we still have to provide families with the bare essentials, a bag of maize, salt, sugar, soap and clothing. Um, and we will continue to support secondary and tertiary level students. So thank you to those people who um, are sponsoring those students because there is no other way for some of them to uh, be able to pay their fees. They just, there's simply no one there to come up with that. So, okay, so finished. I also have a copy, if anyone would like it, of our... Uh, annual report um, from our AGM in June, um, so that is available for anyone who would like that. Okay, if we can just have a quick look at um, this video to finish. It's, quality isn't great. Um, I asked Susan to provide something for me until Hi. I can get back here and take my own. Uh, Our dear come friends in New Zealand, I want to thank God because of your heart.
because of your faithfulness to him, your kind hearts. And thank God you've been faithful in giving towards Shine and Shine Ministry. You know, there's been a lot of testimonies. People's hearts have been touched and moved through um, Shine Ministry. People having their prayers answered, you know, having this relationship with God and their joy just being complete. And I want to thank God that you've been part of their journey uh, where Shine is. People walk like nine kilometers to get to the clinic. In the villages here, it's really um, difficult to get the women to come to the under five or to do the family planning. So once a month at uh, Shine Center, there's a mobile clinic um, that uh, the hospital does and so because they don't have a facility in the area they've been using uh, the shine playground to administer um, the uh, under five clinic and also talk to the women about um, child spacing and if they are very sick for them to walk because of the distance it's not easy transportation in the area um, are bikes. You have to pay 1,500. People cannot manage to do that. Through this support that has been coming from New Zealand to Shine, we've been able to pay for the bike and also pay for the medical expenses. There's um, great news. The government has been really impressed with uh, the numbers of women attending the clinic and they've seen um, uh, that many women are able to take um, use the family planning. Once they come to Shine Center, we like usually pray for the women and do the counseling and also talk to the women about um, child spacing they, they love coming to hear the word of god uh, because then they are encouraged there government uh, will be able to provide the medication and also uh, the medical personnel they can we like stationed um, um, and um, you know a warehouse for to keep the the medication at Shine Center and and also a house for this medical uh, personnel. So maybe a two bedroomed house where he can you know like stay there so that you know people can come to the clinic uh, whenever they are sick that they don't have to walk a long distance uh, they can be treated and also when you know like they can also sit um, on the chairs because at the moment they sit on the ground or the community can be involved in you know doing some of of, of the work <laughs> you for making a decision to fundraise for shine yeah in our prayers much love from malawi much love from shine bye bye <laughs> bye, -bye. bye. bye. cool is that? I love it. I w I'm always inspired by missions. Thank you, Lindley, for um, all that you and your team do in Malawi. Does anyone else feel like you take your life for granted when you just get reminded of how others live on the daily grind? And we're like, oh, it's so frustrating. I have to wait for five minutes at a traffic. You know, like we just kind of minimise our lives to this big thing. But when you're reminded of how others live, I love it. It's inspiring. Thank you. So if you want to partner with Lindley, um, please see her after the service. Um, on our givings envelope is also a missions tab. Uh, but you can tab that in your regular giving as well. Tag that, sorry, not tab that. 
Awesome. So I'm just going to pray over our giving and then welcome Pastor Michelle up. So Lord, I just give thanks that um, we are we live in abundance, Father God. Lord, that we live with plenty here in Aotearoa, New Zealand, Father God. And But I love that you just create connections and opportunities to serve the nations around us, Lord, that go without. So even as we give into this house this morning, Father God, may we be reminded of the need of the nations, Father God. And um, I just thank you that... Um, you're working, that your kingdom will come and your will will be done, Father God. And I pray that we would partner with you in such a way that would allow you to move, Father God, that would allow people to hear the gospel, that would allow for basic needs even just within our own community to be met. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Awesome. Well, it's my privilege to welcome Pastor Michelle this morning to share her word. Awesome. Thank you, Becca. It's really cool to hear about some of those things that are happening and it's going to tie in really well um, with my sermon this morning. Um, so last week we had, um, well, for those of you who don't know, we've been, um, for the last wee while, we've been doing um, preaching a series um, on um, the Sermon on the Mount from Matthew um, called Form for Faithfulness. Um, last week we had Ma- Pastor Mike and he gave us the dad talk. Um, on love, sex and marriage and if you missed it, you missed out and you, it's worth a listen so get on our, um, um, on our Facebook and um, l- listen to that and catch up um, but the week before that we had um, Damo preach an amazing message for us um, on um, Matthew 6 verses 1 to 4 which was on um, um, giving and fasting and um, verses 16 to 18, which are actually the two passages before the bit that I'm going to preach today. So I'll refer back to that a bit, but that was also a great message, so you can listen to that online too if you did miss it. Um, Damo unfortunately had some technical issues, so um, I've gone to paper because he scared the living daylights out of me, and I don't want that to happen to me. In fact, my computer is a bit dodgy, the kids have played with it. It's lost its um, turn-on button, so it's got a hole you have to stick a paper clip through and get it in just the right place and turn it on. So my fear this morning was, when I came down here to church to print out my sermon, that it may not turn on, especially after all day most hitches. But praise the Lord, it printed, and um, so I'm not just speaking off the cuff here this morning. So that's really good. I feel a bit more happy about that. So first, let's kick off by um, reading the passage we're going to be talking about today. You can turn in your Bibles with me to Matthew 6, um, verses 5 to 15. But if you don't have your Bibles, I think it's up on the screen, but I may have made it a bit tiny. Oh no, it's bigger for you. That's all right. I just can't read it off there. So I'll read it off here. And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on street corners to be seen by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room and close the door and pray to your Father who is unseen. Then the Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like the pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for the Father knows what you need before you ask him. This then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we have forgiven our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from the evil one. For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. Well, despite the fact when I was in the prayer meeting this morning, it felt like a prayer closet because the lights um, are not turning on at the moment. It's dark. Um, It felt like I was in a prayer closet. There were a whole lot of other people there, so it wasn't alone and in secret. Um, But I also loved to just even hearing Becca pray before that she was praying some of this prayer, which was really, really awesome about God's kingdom coming. Um, In this passage, um, Jesus is obviously preaching on prayer. So um, Damo preached on um, giving, and then it teaches on prayer, and then on fasting. Um, And there's some threads that kind of tie in between all three. Um, But the two main threads of this is um, Jesus is telling us how not to pray, 
and how to pray. So we're going to be looking at those two on and off this morning. The first one is don't pray like the hypocrites. And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on street corners to be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. Um, the word hypocrite is um, a, a word that was actually, even the word that Jesus would have used was a, um, a Greek word that was borrowed because Jesus used Aramaic, you see, but it was a, um, a Greek word and it meant... Um, it comes from the word, um, the Greek word is hypocrites, I think I'm saying it right, which means an actor or a stage player. Its direct translation is actually an interpreter from underneath. And that makes more sense when we understand that in Greek theatre they wore large masks and um, to mark the character. So they were playing literally underneath a mask. Um, so this then became, took on extended meaning to refer to somebody who was wearing a figurative mask. They were pretending to be someone that they actually were not. Um, so what Jesus is really saying here is he's saying, don't be someone who's just trying to make a good impression. It's easy to do sometimes, isn't it? To look like we're doing the right thing. Um, in Jewish custom, it, um, it was customary to pray three times a day, in the morning, in the afternoon, and then again in the evening. And this could even, you know, like when they were, it's probably a bit like what we see um, in the Muslim community today, um, and, and they would be called to pray. And this could even be done when the call to prayer came, this could either be done discreetly or it could be done in a pretentious way. And so what Jesus is upset about here is not necessarily the praying on street corners um, or praying out loud. What he's actually address addressing here is the heart motive. Because um, in this, um, it was an honour-shame culture. And what people were trying to do, and it was the same with the, the giving to people and the fasting, what people were trying to do is they were trying to be seen to be doing the right thing so that they would be praised by people and that would um, you know, improve their social status. Um, so Jesus is really challenging this, this concept. Um, and he's saying that, that um, he's challenging his disciples and his followers to do these things, not to be seen by others, but to do it for their audience of one. Jesus says that the reward um, for doing it in public, doing it to be noticed, is just the acclaim of people. And it only lasts for a short moment. It's real cheap, it's real short lived. But um, what Jesus is trying to subtly correct here or deconstruct is the whole paradigm of prayer and religious practice and ritual. He's trying to say, um, he's trying to do something completely different, completely radical. He's, he's, he's saying that, he, it, that it's actually about relationship with God. It's not about an act. It's not about putting on a show. It's about a personal, intimate Heart relationship with God. Okay, so then he flips to telling us what to do. So he says, do pray. Where are we to pray? Go into our closet in the secret place where it's unseen? Yeah. So go somewhere private, somewhere undistracted, somewhere isolated. And I preached quite a lot about that the last time I preached on prayer. So I'm not going to go into that in too much detail. But just to remind us that, remember, Jesus himself modelled that. Um, he went to the aromas. He went to the, wild, uh, to the wilderness. He went to the desert. He went to the uninhabited places to pray. Where is our uninhabited place? Where is your uninhabited place? Where's my uninhabited place? Where can I go and just be alone with God? You know, if I want to build an intimate relationship, I don't go and hang out with him in a, in a room with a whole lot of people. I come and get away with him and we go for a walk or we go for a, um, a drive and we go somewhere that just him and I can talk where we can build relationship and, int and have intimacy. And that's what Jesus is saying that we need to do here. He's saying, it's about, again, it's about relationship. It's about that intimacy. It's about spending that one-on-one -on -one time together. To, it's about 
God knowing us, which he does anyway, but it's us, more about us knowing him. Yeah. Yeah, and then it goes on to say, then your father in secret. No, then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Jesus uses the term father. Again, he's just communicating this close relationship. And I know for far, for the word father for many of us has connotations. But I just remember how I spoke last time. It's just that close family member that there's a, you know, there's a blood relationship. Someone who knows us intimately. Someone who loves us, who cares about us, who wants to protect us. It's that relationship. Um, it's a place that... Um, We go and we meet God, and he's there. And I personally think the reward, actually, is knowing him more. That is the reward. When we go into that secret place and we spend time with him, we are rewarded. The rewarded is getting to know God more. Um, It's interesting. He uses the same thing about doing things in secret with the giving with the fasting, with the the prayer. And I think it's a bit of a fence. It's a bit of a hedge against doing things with the wrong motives. You know, if we do things without being, if we don't do things publicly and we do it secretly and privately, um, then, you know, it's not really for self-centered reasons if we're doing them secretly. So it's kind of like a bit of a hedge about, you know, that that idea of doing things in secret. And um, it can help us even judge our own motives. Are we doing it for show, for people to notice and see us, or are we just doing it to build that close, intimate relationship um, with God? Okay, so then we jump back into don't pray. So don't pray like the pagans. When you pray, do not keep on babbling like the pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them. For your father knows what you need even before you ask him. So a pagan was anyone who didn't follow Yahweh. And um, the pagans, they babbled. It was repeating the same words over and over and over without thinking. Do we ever do that when we pray? Say a whole lot of words that we don't mean, that we're not thinking about. Um, And the pagans would do crazy things to try and get the attention of their gods. They'd rip their clothes. They would scream. They would, you know, do that babbling over and over. They would even cut themselves. They would be doing anything to try and get the gods to see them. Um, And they would um, argue and manipulate and say, um, if you do this for me to get their needs met, I'll, I'll, I'll make you this offering or I'll do this. So it was a real transactional relationship. It wasn't... Um, a caring, loving relationship was very transactional. Um, so they would demand the attention of the gods and then they would inform them what they needed to have their unmet needs met. So Jesus, in contrast here, he's so contrasting this. He's saying, don't be like them. For your father, your father who, wants, who loves you and cares about you and wants to protect you, he already knows what you need. You don't have to. It's not a transactional relationship. This is an intimate, caring, loving relationship. It's not transactional. Um, He knows what you need even before you ask. So again, Jesus is reframing. This, This would have been quite revolutionary to the listeners. He's reframing the whole way that they viewed God um, and also how they were doing relationship with him. Um. He's not saying here not to ask. Because again, we just know, and and as we continue on the Sermon on the Mount, if we jump ahead to the next chapter, we can see that he actually tells us to ask. So he's not saying that. He's not saying not ask. He, He likes us to ask, but he's saying that he cares enough. We don't have to convince him to help us. He already knows what we need. He already wants to to give us what we need to provide and care for us because he's a loving God who wants to be in intimate relationship with us. And then we jump back to how to pray. Do pray like Jesus. Then Jesus tells his listeners how to pray and he gives them what we know is the Lord's Prayer. It's actually a bit of a poem. Um, When I say the Lord's Prayer, what do you think of? Anybody? Anybody? Oh, don't all speak at once. 
For me, I think of the musty smell of the little wooden church just down the road from my farm. I think of the smooth, well-worn pews in which I would sit as a little kid and swing my legs. Um, I think of my, I, I was a farm girl, a bit of a tomboy, so on Sundays I had to get dressed up and I had to wear itchy, uncomfortable dresses and um, Sunday clothes and I can remember just sitting on the seat with my dad's big hold, hand holding mine. The thing is, the problem with the Lord's Prayer is not the prayer itself, it's that it's like all those well-known songs that they evokes memories and our own interpretation of things. Um, you know, sometimes we have songs um, and they've lost the original meaning of the author. And um, that's what we can tend to do a wee bit with the Lord's Prayer. The thing is, the problem's not the prayer. The problem's us and what we bring to it. And unfortunately for many of us, just saying the Lord's Prayer has just become a dead ritual and empty words. And we don't want to be you know, just doing those empty words because Jesus has already warned us not to be like the hypocrites who are just using those empty words. So we don't want to be like that. So, but then Jesus goes on to say, this is how we should pray. And I think he meant it. I think he meant that this is how we should pray. How many of you pray like the Lord's Prayer? I always remember my mum used to go for a prayer walk every morning and I'd always say to her, what do you pray when you go? And she literally did go through the Lord's Prayer line by line in her own words, praying through that every morning. That's what she did. That's what she'd been taught to do and that's what she did. And it's actually incredible. And I think it's a good habit and that I could pick up on. For many of us, prayer is a reactive habit. You know, we just go, thank you, thank you, thank you. Help me, help me, help me. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Um, But Jesus here is giving a proactive means of cultivating a regular habit of prayer. Um, This is an incredible prayer. It's a real invitation to share in the prayer life of Jesus. It's a gift. This is Jesus' very own heartbeat. I wouldn't be surprised if this is what he prayed when he went to the uninhabited place. This is Jesus's recipe for human flourishing. Um, And it's broken into two kind of two set verses. So if we just flip to the next slide, um, we might just read it together first. Are you ready? Our Father, in heaven. Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. So if we go to the next slide, we can just see how it's actually like a poem and it's divided into two set verses. The first verse talks all about your and the second verse talks all about us. This really reflects Jesus's priorities and the greatest commandment to love the Lord your God with all your heart and to love your neighbor as yourself. Every line is something that Jesus thinks that we need to say to ourselves daily. Okay, first off, it's really important to know who we're praying to. So we're praying to Jesus' Father, and that's all really confusing because Jesus said, if you want to know what the Father looks like, look at me. So we're praying to someone who is like Jesus. Um, And we're praying to, again, that Father, you know, who's different from um, heathen gods. It's not after a transaction, um, re- transactional relationship. He's after a, an intimate relationship. Um, it's that familial, fam- <laughs> that fam- family. You know what I mean. My leg, my tongue's going funny now. And you know, as I said last time, we we can just run in. It's like running and having that relationship with our dad or our mum, and we have fridge rights, and we just have the ability to just run into the throne room. We have fridge rights. We are family. We can run into his presence. That's who we're praying to. 
And then last time I talked about um, how it said our Father in heaven. And just the idea that we have is that heaven's a far off place. But the word here that's used for heaven is the same word that's used for sky and ear. So that means it's, he's not a far off God. He's right here. He's all around us. Ear is in us and through us and about us. He's right here. That's who we're praying to. And then first off, we talk, the, the first part, um, first phrase talks about loving God and it, orient, it orients us to the Father. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. That just means simply, holy be your name. May your name be recognised as holy. That's what we want. He, that he is the creator and recognising that he is the creator and we are the creation just putting that right first. It's not about me. It's all about you, God. That he is the king. Acknowledging he, him as the king. This is, this is basically the first few commandments. Loving God. Putting him first. Having him above everything else. Yeah. <clears throat> the next bit says, your kingdom come. This is our spoken longing for God's kingdom to come here on earth. I'm just going to share with you a wee diagram to help explain this that I've stolen from Tim Mackey off the Bible Project because I think it's really helpful and it's helpful to me. So hopefully this kind of helps and I don't open a can of worms and you confuse you even more. So here we go. We'll try. So this is how we kind of think of heaven and earth. We kind of think of them as two separate things, okay? It's like that. But actually they started off as one together like this, heaven and earth together. That was what it was like when God created the world in the beginning. And then, with the fall of sin, we, um, man decided that they wanted to do, have the right. We decided we want to have the right to do things our own way and to make our own choices about good and evil. And so, we can't completely kick God out from the world and, and have it, heaven and his reign. So, but you can see how they've become separated. And then... Um, the whole thing, the whole story of the whole Bible is about Jesus coming to bring the kingdom and to try and increase, increasingly bring the kingdom. So when Jesus said he came to bring the kingdom like the kingdom is now, and um, it's kind of the, the here now, but the fully, not f here now, but the, the, the not yet, not completely fully yet kind of thing. And, and um, when we're praying, we're praying for more of God's kingdom to come here on earth. And then at the end of time, we're going to return to having heaven and earth once again coming together and God's reign being complete and his kingdom to be have fully come. Um, so that's what's going on here. That's what we're praying when we pray for God's kingdom to come. You know, Jesus came to announce that kingdom, that the kingdom had arrived with him. Yeah. Has God's kingdom come? Yes, the answer is yes. Has it come fully and invaded every inch of our world? No. Ha um, has the ca kingdom come in your life if you're a disciple of Jesus? Yes, because we have the Holy Spirit. Um, has the Holy Spirit been fully able to transform every inch of my life or your life? Maybe not. I'll leave the youth to, to you to decide that one. Um, so what we're praying for when we say for God's kingdom to come is for God's kingdom to take over more and more of our world and more and more of our life as a disciple of Jesus. Yeah. And so the, this whole first section, even that, you know, this bit ties in, it's really the same thing for your will be done on earth. We're saying your will be done here on earth as it is in your kingdom of heaven. That's what we're saying. So this is our story. So this whole thing just reorientates us in that story, story um, once again. And then it flicks into the next part, which is loving your neighbour as yourself, or the us part. And, you know, you might have prayed this prayer and you might have think it actually, was actually all about me, but Jesus doesn't use the, a singular term here. And he could have, but he doesn't. He uses the word us. And I think that's really key. And I probably didn't really notice that before until I really started looking at it for the sermon. And I thought, ah, oh, I just get this prayer so much more now. Yeah, I can see what Jesus is doing. Yeah, so 
Um, the first bit he says, give us um, today our daily bread. So he's alluding to here um, the story of the manna in the desert, how Jesus um, provided them everything that they needed daily. Um, they were in an in-between space and they had to depend on God to meet their needs. Um, the provision was a gift. We need to see provision as a gift. We too have our foot in two camps. We're in the between, the in-between space of the, the now but not fully yet um, space and there's a tension for our loyalty and we too need to have a mindset um, view of each day's provision being a gift from God. You know, it's so easy. We, it's so easy to live in other stories that everything I have is because I've earned it. But actually, you know, that's not the true story. Um, and if we orientate and we're praying this every day, it's, it changes how we see and view our stuff. And later we see that it changed the disciples' life so much that they, they, what did they do with their bread? What did they do with their stuff that they were giving it and providing for the poor? And you can see that that's what's happening with Shine Village. People are counting what they have has come to, into their hand as God's daily provision to them that they can then use it as a means to enable other people to have provision because it's about God giving us our daily bread, not God giving me our daily bread. So it's really that, that outward bit. And, we, and it, I think this, it changes your whole mindset when you realise it's an us and that this is God's daily provision. Yeah, it's really a prayer that inspires generosity. Um, we're short on time. The next bit is forgiveness, and this is a tricky one, but I think it's something that's really at the heart of Jesus' um, kingdom movement, something that um, Jesus thinks it's really important for us to get in our brains daily. I am forgiven. Say that, I am forgiven. I am called to be a disciple of Jesus to forgive. Yeah. You know, if we keep asserting our right to get even, one wrong responding with another wrong, it's just a downward spiral as Jamie talked to us about in his sermon. Jesus declares a stop to that and he absorbs the violence himself on the cross. He doesn't get even so that we can experience his forgiveness. And he invites us to do the same. And I know forgiveness is a really hard thing. And some of us have horrible things happen to us because the world is broken and the kingdom is not fully here. And it's really hard. And forgiveness is not brushing off um, wrongdoing. It's not ignoring it or hiding it under the rug. It's naming it and choosing to lay down your right to full recomp um, recompense or to... to to, to having, um, it's laying that down. It doesn't mean that there's no consequences. And it's not the, not the same as reconciliation. Reconciliation is when two parties come together. And, and, but forgiveness is one, it requires one party to give up the right to ret retaliation. Um, because God gave up that right for me. Um, you know, someone can, a person can really have screwed up and you may never want to be alone with them ever again. But somehow we need to get to the place that we can still view them as a human being, valuable, made in God's image, and that we can wish them well. God knows that it's hard and he refers to it again even at the end as if that's not hard enough. He makes an extra verse at the end that says, for if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly father will also forgive you. But if you cannot forgive others their sin, your heavenly father will not forgive your sin. He really stresses the importance of forgiveness. He doesn't say if, you're, um, if you struggle to forgive or if you take time to forgive, he's basically saying if you refuse to, ref to forgive. To Jesus, the number one sign that we've truly ex experienced his grace is that we can let it throw, flow, th flow through us and to forgive. If we don't forgive, it's an evidence that we truly haven't experienced his forgiveness and grace. 
Um, So he's telling us here we need to daily pray for his help to help me forgive. You know, unforgiveness can become one of the hugest roadblocks to intimacy with God. Um, I just love this prayer because I don't think it's so much about God. I think it's about us. And I'm going to skip the last part, but basically he says, if you've done all this, don't expect not to be challenged challenged about it. If you're living the Christian life, don't expect not to live unchallenged. He said you can pray not to have trials, but Jesus experienced them and he had to go through them. And, um, And, you know, he's saying then pray that you'll deliver us from the evil one, that we won't fall into temptation or fall away as as a result of it when we are tested. Um, Following Jesus is hard, and tests are not a sign that God has abandoned us. In fact, they're the opposite. Um, They're a sign sign that we're we're on the right track. Um, And I love this prayer. I just think it's a real heartbeat of Jesus. It's the real heartbeat. There's a couple of um, conclusions I'd just like to go to quickly as we close. Um, Jesus is calling us out of empty religious prayer. He's calling us into an intimate relationship with him to make his priorities our priorities and allow his prayer to change us. Can I pray for us? Dear Lord God, Lord, we just thank you for this amazing teaching that you gave on prayer. You were so clever. This prayer is so clever. Lord, I just pray that you help us to incorporate it into our daily lives, that it would change us from the inside out, that we truly could be instruments of helping bring your kingdom. Um, to this place. In your mighty name we pray. Amen. Good. Thank you, Pastor Michelle. Challenging and encouraging all in one. (laughs) I love it. I'm just going to speed through our notices so we have time for cups of tea and coffee. Um, But we're still on the lookout for kids' church servers. So if that is your way inclined, then please come and see Pastor Michelle and she will get you hooked up with that. Um, Just a massive thank you for yesterday for the working bee. Um, Got so much done. It was um, just a really fun um, time. Um, Lots of smashing and um, tearing things down, which is always uh, therapeutic for the soul. (laughs) Um, Also, um, just so many people came in and out throughout the day and just gave what they could. And yeah, it was awesome. So thank you so much to all of that. Um, We've got Dr. Sean's intensive is coming up um, Friday and Saturday, the 31st to the 1st of October. Um, That is going to be from 9 to 4, and it's $75 to attend that. And if you see Pastor Dawn, um, she'll have more info on that. Um, we have our youth camp coming up in October. Woohoo! Um, we are looking for sponsorship. Um, we've had a couple of kids that have asked and said, hey, we can't afford to be able to attend youth camp this time. So um, if anyone feels way inclined to sponsor a couple of children, that would be amazing. I call them children, but they're youth. Same thing. <laughs> they wouldn't like me calling them children. Awesome. Next... Um, Next Sunday, oh no, next Sunday's Father's Day. There you go, there's your reminder for the week. (laughs) I was already on my mind. Um, (laughs) Yes, Uh, and we're going to be having bacon butties. Yum. I know, I'm going to slip it on there, Father's Day. Awesome. Right, let's um, have some tea and coffee um, and have a good time of fellowship together. Amen? Amen.